And hey everybody, welcome to Squatch Talk. I'm Pat. Don't worry, you're not going to see or hear from me very long. Just wanted to kick off the show, say thanks for being here. Our very first official debate night here at Squatch Talk. We've got Bigfooter versus Skeptic, and I'm excited as I could be. And what I'm going to do is kick myself backstage, like I should probably do every show, and uh, just let uh, these fine people do what they're going to do and bring you this debate that I will not be involved in except for talking with everyone in chat. So uh, thanks for being here. And uh, I'm going to hit the remove button right now. And Amy, you you have the floor. Thank you so very much, Pat. And welcome to Debate Night here at Squatch Talk. I am Amy Newman, here moderating tonight. But we have Patrick and Jorge here to have some fun with that. We are going to hand it to Patrick for his five-minute opening statement. Okay, uh, five-minute presentation. Um, I believe the reported phenomenon surrounding the subject of Bigfoot is real, and I'll, I believe that uh, supports the existence of Bigfoot as well. Um, reported uh, phenomenons or tracks, and if picks one would be brought up, I'm not sure you can do that if I'm taking up the whole screen. It's an amateur night tonight, so... Anyway, I have tr tracks, picks of tracks, which is, they're numbered in, with a red number on the top left-hand corner, pick one and pick two. There are tracks and casted tracks. Uh, I have a, a corridor, which is picks three and four, which are numbered sequentially like that. Uh, breaks on the trails, uh, which is... Yep, that is track, and then uh, pick two is cast a track. That's what people are reporting around the phenomenon uh, that surrounds the existence of Bigfoot. Pick two, please. I should have gone 10 minutes for technical difficulties. <laughs> okay, anyway, moving forward. Um, I have pictures of X structure, which was uh, labeled picture six, and uh, tree structures, which was labeled pick seven, and eye shine, which was labeled a pick eight, which evidently, technically, we cannot get to them. But those are phenomenons that surround the uh, the all the reported sightings and, and interactions and experiences with uh, the target species known as Bigfoot. And I believe all that uh, phenomenon does support and lend uh, credence to the existence of such a being. Um, and with the technical difficulties, I think uh, I could pass it to Orge. Woohoo! Thank you so very much, and all right, thank you, Patrick, with your five-minute opening statement. With that, we're going to pass it over to your opening statement, Jorge. Hello. Um, I'm going by Jorge tonight because that's the way Squatch Talk likes to refer to me. Uh, I okay. have a YouTube channel. Uh, my name is my YouTube channel. I'm going to have to apologize right from the get-go because my kid is not sleeping, so she is... On my, that's my kid. 
Hi. Um, so she's making noise. I apologize for that. I'll try to do my best here. But uh, yeah, I am the skeptic in the room. I do not believe Bigfoot. I don't believe it's impossible. I just haven't seen enough evidence to verify its existence. Um, I was brought in this debate sort of last minute, which is more than fine. But the way I view Bigfoot is there's a lot of sightings. Patrick has a lot of what he considers evidence. And I question whether his evidence is an actual gigantic 8 to 10 foot tall undiscovered ape species that has the intelligence to vocalize and form some sort of community that has been undiscovered by science for as long as science has been going at it. Um, I'm going to post videos, uh, links in the public chat because I'm, I don't know how to present really, but Bigfoot sightings have been all over the world and all over America since at least the 1950s extensively. You have Bigfoot recordings as far back as the 1800s, and the vast majority of those have been either just eyewitness accounts or they have been factual hoaxes. The first big Bigfoot um, happened in the 1950s, which was, I'm trying to look up the name here, they were footprints, supposed footprints, was a confirmed hoax. The Patterson Gimli film, later on, the most famous of all the Bigfoot examples, is very inconclusive. As with most um, modern cryptozoological findings, it's very telling that the better and the more prevalent cameras have gotten, the less and less quality images we have taken of that. Same thing with the Loch Ness Monster. Most famous picture of Loch Ness Monster is this grainy photo from, what, the 60s? Everyone has a camera in their, in their pocket right now, but somehow we don't see high-quality images. Bigfoot's the same way. Why is a literal reel-to-reel, -reel, like, what, 8-millimeter video, the best video we have of Bigfoot? All of you have cameras in your phones, but the best you can do is tracks. So... Uh, that, to me, is a big issue. It's never been shot. All evidence that I've been able to locate of hair or fecal matter or blood matter or something like that has been, at best, inconclusive, and at worst, some other species. So, all of that, I, I'm not here to tell you Patrick is lying. I'm never going to say that. But I will say that the evidence, to me, is lacking. So, that's my opening statement. I think that's a fair assessment on my end um patrick's a real good guy i've talked to him plenty of times he's real outdoorsy way the hell more outdoors uh, outdoorsman than i am i mean his hat's camel for christ's sake but that's my stance so that'll be my time thank you thank you both patrick and ogre for your opening statements we're now going into about an hour of open conversation so these two can go back and forth. And as long as everyone is making nice, clean, happy sound bikes, won't have to push anybody into the corner. But with that, I'm looking forward to a rowdy open dialogue. The floor is all yours, gentlemen. Well, Orge, may I speak? Yeah, uh, yeah go first, man. That's cool. Um, well, you're incorrect about the first Sasquatch uh, sighting. Okay, the first Sasquatch, uh, Sasquatch sightings can have been traced back to over 400 years ago by First Nations here on this continent. Um, uh, cave drawings exist of this being. And, you know, and it was always a question of mine is how, how come a cave drawing from hundreds of years ago exist with spoken accounts and and you can't dig very far back into the history of this continent without finding uh every name that every tribe had on this continent for it but also how a primitive society that called this continent home for hundreds of years uh, uh, uh reported the same sighting the same species of being that the modern us that call this kind of home are, are reporting scene as well. So over cool. a span, over um, a span of hundreds of years, by yes. thousands of people reporting the same thing that never met each other, never spoke to one another. You know, I think that would be a something to ponder. So I fully grant that the oldest um, sightings 
or the oldest uh, stories of Bigfoot, or what I just said. Sure. I have no problem in me that I'm not aware of these. As I said, I came in this last minute, so my research is rather brief. But I'll grant you that. Um, you're still stuck to me with the same issue of you just have anecdotal evidence. You just have sightings. Uh, you have what I think would I could qualify as fairy tales or um, stories passed down from generations. And that's a very low bar of evidence in my book. Um, there are cultures all over the world that have stories that you don't believe that are just as older, older. But the Bigfoot one, you do believe, and all these other cultures you don't, that's an issue to me, right? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I can go back to, you know, ancient religions like the Hindu religion. There are stories of, uh, what's, what's the, the flood story is about like a turtle that was upside, someone wrote a turtle upside down or something like that, right? That story is excellent and very old and very well established, but I doubt you believe it. So I guess the crux of my argument for this debate is uh, stories aren't enough for me. I need something more. I need something verified by an outside source. And I think, I mean, I'd, I'd love to t you to tell me something I don't know, but I don't think you have that. I don't think the Bigfoot community has. Hi, Daddy. Hi kid. I don't think the Bigfoot community, <laughs> thanks, Patrick, has that. And if, if my bar of evidence is too high in your mind, we can have that conversation, of course. You need to go to bed. I'll, I'll mute so you don't have to listen to her talk. Um, no, I agree very much with what you're saying as far as uh, anecdotal accounts and, and also other things being put out there that are fiction. But even today, if you look at the human mind and the, cre and the creativity of it and the creation of fiction, uh, the human mind creates fiction and something fantastic to happen. However, these cave drawings are painted on cave walls next to elk and bear and deer and all the and all the testimony is of that these creatures are of the physical realm that they live in. Now you can take uh, dragons and such like that and that's something fiction and you have fiction writers today in fact fiction writers outright non non-fiction writers to this day and is a much bigger industry. So in the past uh, I chalk that up to that. And as far as the bar of, all right, the bar of proof, um, I researched the bar of proof as well. And, and a lot of people think, well, Bigfoot should be easy to prove. Well, those are people who are caught up in old Matlocks and the old uh, Perry Masons where uh, in the court of law you could prove something. Well, in the court of law, in a case study I did and I was involved in, I could charge, have arraigned, arrested and arraigned, and put on trial a trespasser on someone's property because I had six witnesses and cast a tracks of what trespassed there. But the law is not there to set a bar of existence for anything. It is simply a matter of the law and if the law was broken. Uh, scientific proof, which is uh, a much higher bar, it uses empirical evidence, uh, of observation, of uh, experimentation, peer review, and all those we are missing. We do not have that, that, uh, that, we cannot meet that burden of proof yet. However, again, in my opening statement, I said, I believe the phenomenon as reported that surrounds the subject of Bigfoot is real, and that supports the existence of Bigfoot. Cool. Um, uh, as I said, I'm unaware of the... What? I'm unaware of the um, cave drawings, so I looked them up. I'll post the link. I don't know if this is exactly what you're talking. I can't post that link. Let's see. So I googled cave drawing of Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. The first link that showed up for me, because again, I'm, I'm not familiar with this, was an isu.edu link to what appears to be a paper um, I don't know if this is exactly what you're talking about or not, but I can look at this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. This is a paper someone did of supposed cave drawings of, they call them hairy man pictographs in California. Is that what you're talking about, or do you have a, a better link for me to follow? So I can look at what you're thinking about. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, 
look up totems as well because only real animals are carved in the totems as well. So you'll find them all. Like, throughout. just look up Bigfoot uh, totem? <laughs> well, totems, you know, uh, Pacific Northwest totems, you'll find well, Bigfoot. So totems are a very new thing. So I don't see why a totem pole couldn't have a fictional creature on it. Well, like, actually, they date back, you know, hundreds of years. I mean... It's a Native American thing. So at this point, we're kind of going off of only your knowledge. I've never seen a totem pole of Bigfoot, so I would need to know exactly what you're talking about to have this conversation. Well, a totem, a totem has a collection of an eagle and bear and, you know, different the different uh, uh, species that surround that particular geographic area of that tribe. And a lot of them will also have a Sasquatch as well. And... I heard that there's a report of a specific Sasquatch face that is well known. Uh, well, actually exactly, Patrick. We'll get into the realm of... Uh, <laughs> I've got to put it down soon, sorry. Honestly, we'll, we'll, we'll get into the realm of I've seen, and then how, what am I supposed to do about that, right? Like, I'm supposed to trust that your proof is good enough for me when I, I, don't, I don't know this totem. Well, um... I believe, I believe the the putting this information out here and the person that will, that that gleams in, uh, inside off of it and walks away with more than they had, is the winner. Okay, I'm just I'm I'm just here to support the phenomenon that surrounds uh, the reported uh, things in the cases of having experience with Bigfoot, and that which I believe that itself does it does. Uh, support the existence of that creature uh, being real. Okay. Um, I'll have to... Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm going to have to um, go back to my original... Okay, I'm going to try... Can, I'm going to have to ask for five minutes so I can put go her ahead, down. Man. Go ahead, man. She does not want me to talk. Go ahead, man. It's cool. All right, Patrick, uh, t tell everyone why, why you correct for five minutes, please. Uh, I'm just going to doodle. Um, I refer to Amy Newton, uh, Newman. Uh, she's the moderator. I'm sure she can handle the, the show for five minutes while Orge does what he needs to do. Sure. So I'll just instead ask what I believe is a neutral question, which is, Patrick, why do you believe what you believe? I believe what I believe because in 2002, I was an absolute skeptic. These things did not real. They were not real. They did not exist. But as a primitive survivalist and primitive living skills instructor and going out doing my own thing, I run into something that was not supposed to be there. And I was chased for over a mile out of the woods with it 12 feet to my left in broad daylight. And so now I've been do I've done research for the last 18 years and I've tracked tw uh, a tracking, I'm a third generation tracker. I've tracked 28 different individuals of these species in five different states and have had encounters with them. And I've even snapped a picture of one, but it was a blob squatch. I even tried to get a picture last weekend when I was out hunting of a squirrel and I still couldn't do that. So I'm kind of, of a failure with a, with a camera, but that's why I believe what I believe. All right, I'm back. Uh, sorry about that again, Patrick. She's she's two. I mean, you know, I can't really reason with her. So, no but way. um, okay. So uh, I believe we are doing uh, totem poles. Did you want to change subject, or did you want to continue on that? Well, I was just uh, pointing out that the 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 earliest account was not 1950s. It does go back further, and we can come forward on the timeline. And we can discuss evidence and the lack of evidence because I completely agree we have we don't have the evidence to ma to meet the burden of proof. However, I do believe if we keep plugging away at the problem, we will. So, to me, this this conversation was um, sort as a not what's the chance of it being in the future because that's completely undeterminable, but should I believe it now? Well, um, it, it, if you would like, I could put out my best evidence that I have to date. Please do, yeah. Okay, if, uh, if, if he who has his hands on the computer could pull up 
pictures uh, picture 10 it would be nice and you can keep chatting if you want to argue while, while he figures out his technical thing Or he may not be be paying attention. He may just be out on the balcony. I'm paying attention. I'm here. I'm talking about uh, oh, I'm Patrick, about my my technical yeah. person. That's that, oh, uh, yeah. that shows the pictures. Hey, this but is anyway, the first uh, first debate, right? There's always going to be yeah. uh, growing pains. Picture ten. That that picture right there is of a juvenile that I tracked in South Arkansas. It was walking into an experiment that I had set up where I had a camera hidden under a log shining out into an experiment now if you sh pull up uh, picture nine that one now uh, that is the, the the image that was caught on that camera that was buried under the log that was overwatching the experiment and I'm not going to tell you what it is but uh, my personal belief is that this is a representation of the phenomenon known as eye shine you can see the uh, the reflectiveness. That's what I believe it re represents, and I believe it is very real. So you think this is eye shine like an owl or a dog or a cat or something like that, right? No, I think this is what belonged to that, what made that track walked up to, I tracked it up to the log. It stuck its face down where I had my camera buried, and my camera went off. Okay. Well, you said eye shine. Like, humans don't reflect... Uh, apes, don't, to my knowledge, don't reflect eye, don't reflect light from their eyes. So, well, I'm not eye shine is a thing that happens in cats and like owls. Well, eye shine is is a reported phenomenon that surrounds the phenomenon of Bigfoot and oh, experiences okay. with Bigfoot. So, and so Bigfoot, that's, that's what I'm here to do. Okay, so Bigfoot has eye shine, but apes don't. Ape, like he's they're the only ape with that particular thing. Is the argument here? Um, my argument is, is that I am supporting what is reported, the phenomenon that is reported around the subject of Bigfoot, which is eye shine, tracks, uh, stick breaks, uh, uh, X structures, tree push downs, the things that are, are reported around this, ph that phenomenon is reported around the subject of Bigfoot, that's what I'm here to support. Okay, so what if I was to say to you that every one of the things you just said has a non bigfoot explanation mm -hmm. what is there any is there any of that sentence that is exclusively only be able to be done by bigfoot yes because i'm a third generation tracker and i was tracking the being that did that so every what, what of the i think you, you listed four or five things there one of those is not able to be done by any other species in north america well, it could be. If I tracked a deer up there, then I would tell you a deer stuck its head in my camera and that was a deer iris. Or if it was a coon, then I could have tracked the coon up there and I'd say, well, that was a coon iris. But that's why I like being a tracker and, and, and I didn't have a choice. My grandfather was tracker. I was trained in tracking. Plus, I, I did decades of training in primitive living skills, primitive uh, uh, survival. And, and, uh, I use that skill set to discern out when in my research, okay, if I hear a knock out there and I go out there and I don't find tracks, then it was nothing to me. But if I hear something out there and I go out there and I can find the tracks and I can track them and there's a track way, then I have a pretty good 99% assurance that I knew what was there, what was doing it. So, okay, my first response to that would be, I think it's reasonable to say that your belief that you're doing it correctly doesn't make any impact to me, right? You, you believe it, but that's not a reason for me to believe it. Um, if you are trying to make the argument that you're an expert at this um, phenomena, as you say, and your expertise is quality enough for me to have to accept it, um, I'm going to need a bit more about that. Because, like, you know, what, uh, you brought up court earlier, right? Court can bring out experts to give their testimony and their explanation of things. That's kind of how court dramas work so are you trying to make the argument that you individually and people in your camp are so such experts at these topics that your 
a statement of belief alone should be evidence. I mean, what like, do you want? You're are you so are you such a good tracker that I should just believe you without any external evidence? Well, I guess if you're asking for my bachelor of science in tracking, I, don't, I wasn't handed one of them. Well, no, no, I'm not asking for a piece of paper to say you're smart. I'm saying like I'm trying to figure out what what you said means to me as a skeptic, right? I know you believe it. I have no doubt in your sincere held belief in this topic. But I need something for me. As a skeptic, I need something beyond your belief. If your <laughs> argument is that I'm, I'm an expert here, take my evidence as expertise, I need to know that. Is that what you're saying? That you are so good at this, your word is good enough to, your word should be good enough to convince me. Because to me, I can just say, well, you're wrong. Because you have nothing behind behind your word, well, right? What I what I'm doing is I am representing the phenomenon that surrounds this uh, subject known as Bigfoot. I am not putting out conclusive evidence of Bigfoot. I am supporting the phenomenon that is reported, and that does support, I believe, supports the existence of Bigfoot. Now. Uh, I don't have a bachelor's of science degree from any tracking school, and I don't know of any tracking school that'll hand you a piece of paper and say, here, go put this on your resume. Uh, I don't think those exist, correct? They could be, I don't know. But, okay, so... You, you've already acknowledged that there's no hard physical evidence. Nope. Um, so, I we can wipe that off the record, that's cool with me. Um... It seems to be... So tell me where I'm wrong in my understanding of your argument here. Uh, uh, I, I don't believe you're wrong. I don't believe you're wrong. Either. Oh, no, I, I was going to continue. Sorry. Okay, um, sorry. Go ahead. So it's cool. Your main crux of your argument seems to be uh, ancient cultures, cave drawings, totem poles, right? Um, they, why, why would I assume they, they are lying? If they, they drew these cave drawings because they actually saw these things. And then... Your personal Patrick Vaughn experience in the woods. Like, those are the two things you have? Okay, no, what, where am I wrong in that? I'm drawing on not only the historical accounts of Bigfoot and the First Nations and the natives that uh, lived here before us, also tens of thousands of reports of eye shine, of tracks of okay. uh, trail breaks, tens of thousands of reports. And what I'm putting out there is representation. It's examples of what people are reporting. And I believe this, this uh, does support the existence of a large bipedal, very elusive primate that lives in the woods. So I, I can go on that a bit. So I'm going to post in the private chat. I'll post in the side chat too for you, Patrick. Um, a list, a, vi a website I found of reported Bigfoot sightings in the U.S. It is an ArcGIS map. ArcGIS is a software that uh, remote sensors use to kind of overlay data. And um, basically the dots are everywhere. There have been Bigfoot sightings all over the place with the exception of the central U.S., right? Mm-hmm. So, in your opinion, is this one species of ape that is essentially over the entire lower 48? It's like everyone's seen the same thing, or are these like, are we somehow, is modern science somehow missed a creature that is literally covering the entire 48 states? Well, I have to go back to... Uh, we have not uh, breached the evidence barrier for scientific, uh, you know, to prove scientifically that it is uh, in existence. However, if you look at tens of thousands, and I actually think more than that, of reported sightings, these things have been discovered. They just have not been accepted by modern man, you know, or the science of. Well, but th that's... And Actually, Patrick, uh, no, 
while uh, Ogre responds, if you could just turn your gain up a little bit. And you guys are doing good. Oh, look what Pat can make my links work. <laughs> um, so, an issue I have is the believability of all this. Um, let's say every one of these dots is an actual sighting of a confirmed creature, right? These, none of these are fake. None of these are hoaxes. None of these are actually deer, something like that. All these are actual sightings of creatures. This is a ridiculously populated map for creatures. And look, these, these dots are very far distances from each other, right? So if this was an actual creature and a creature of intelligence enough to communicate and to scare away and to knock on wood to make noise, that level of intelligence, for that to exist and us to have no physical trace at all, no poop, no actual hair, no uh, no one's ever hit one with a car, no, um, no pictures, no really high-quality images beyond, like, the 60s. You know, we have 20 years of people with cell phones in their pockets. No one's pulled a nice, high-quality image in all that time. Your image that you showed was a bright light, <laughs> right, that you are well, assuming is a Bigfoot. It's not a picture of a Bigfoot. I think we can agree well, to that. Like, I, that's a huge stretch for me. What I think you're outline, outlining with this map is, and, and you're, the way your uh, approach is is a logical fallacy. Okay, you assume something could be because something is, but then again, it may not work that way. Also, if you look at the sightings map, do you see where the gaps are? It's the yeah. desert. Yeah, okay, it's the desert. You're not seeing Bigfoot in the deserts. Well, and the place. You're seeing, yeah. them, you're, you're seeing them where grass is, where woods are, where water is. And guess what a real being needs? Grass and woods and water. Sure, but there's plenty of places where there's not large bodies of water, too. I mean, look at Ohio, look at Kentucky. Heck, look at Washington, right? I, want, <laughs> I mean, Bigfoot sightings are all over the place. And this is one species that's smart enough to knock wood to scare you away. Like, when, we, when modern scientists discover species, they are super, super elusive, Right? Um, it is a breed of monkey that is almost indistinguishable outside of DNA splitting, right? That's the, that's the level of secrecy that is involved in modern development of new species, modern discovery of new species. This is something, Bigfoot is something completely different from everything else in the lower 48. I'm not even talking about other countries that have supposed Bigfoot sightings. Oh, so, I agree. so if it's that unique and it's like, it's, but sh I guess, sure, it's a logical fallacy. I I I'll grant you that, whatever. But I still think it is a valid argument that there's such little evidence beyond hearsay and story for something that is supposedly so widespread and so everywhere. I think that's a good argument against it. Well, yeah, sure. I mean, I, I could find, and, and I can say you're doing awesome, Orgo, because... Uh, 19 years ago, I couldn't have held it together like you are. I'd have been all over someone. However, uh, <laughs> however, you know, after having some terrifying things, um, and a lot of different, uh, a lot of different experiences, I can say that I believe the phenomenon that, that is reported that surrounds Bigfoot is real. And I, and I also believe that supports the existence of Bigfoot. Um, I guess I would, I would ask you about, I could ask you about other stories of supposed cryptids where the evidence is pure hearsay and speculation, maybe not as storied, but some of it is like Thunderbirds, for example, I think or, I did address um, that, didn't I? Or, what I did address all that, didn't I? I the, the, the my human kid mind, might have been yelling at me. Sorry. The, the, <laughs> the human mind has a certain need for fiction. They're Okay. Uh, there were fictitious thoughts and, 
and primitive man as well as fiction writers today and fiction writers today far surpass non-fiction writers of today okay fiction is so much more interesting to our minds okay now what you have to do is discern the difference between fiction and non-fiction I, uh, to me, this is all nonfiction, and I'm hoping that there is, I, I'm, I mean, granted, I'm on the skeptic side for a reason, but I'm not seeing an argument besides believe me. Because uh, to me, um, ancient cultures, uh, native peoples, mm -hmm. uh, cave, cave drawings, I see no reason to believe that is real. Uh, versus story, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, they do real things. They also do unreal things. So I don't well, see any reason to believe that because, right, the Egyptians drew hieroglyphics of their gods. That doesn't mean their gods are actually real. Yeah. So that to me is not an, a concrete argument. The best I'm hearing here so far is personal anecdote which we can both agree is lacking. So I, I know it's not your job to convince me that it's real, but you're then leaving me with no reason to believe it's real. Well, I have no reason to make you believe it's real. Okay, I have, <laughs> I don't, I don't have, or, you know, even now here's the thing, even if I had a two minute video of Sasquatch and I uploaded it and we both watched it, it would still be inconclusive to the scientific community. Okay, I didn't come on here to show conclusive proof. I come on, over, on here to, to uh, provide examples and support for the phenomenon that surrounds Bigfoot that I believe is real and also supports the existence of Bigfoot. Sure, that, but that you still don't even about. have that video. Like, you don't have that minimal thing that's still unacceptable. You're below that level. Yeah, yeah, ex right. exactly, exactly. And also, I would like to say it's it's different from my viewpoint and trying to debate and discuss and to uh, help someone understand that was raised, you know, uh, believing that everything exists is in the books of science. Okay, everything in the book of science was put there by someone researching, someone was stretching out and beyond... Uh, you know, p other people's understandings and finding things and putting them in science books. And that is still happening today, and it is happening in this subject of study as well. I, I don't quite know what you are trying to imply with that sentence. Like, we shouldn't trust science? Is that what you're trying to say? Or science? I'm, say, I'm saying, you historically, saying historically, the science book was empty. It started somewhere. Okay, even science had its great hoax in the late 1800s when England thought it was the cradle of, of mankind's existence of the, the start of and, and they had a, a hoaxed fossil wound up being not a fossil. Okay, even they had their own hoax. But the science started somewhere and it was filled by people who were brave enough, who believed enough to go out and do research and find new beings and find new creatures and, and document them and put them in science books. That's why we have science books to refer back to. And that is still going on to the, today with in modern science with billy apes and everything else still being uh, discovered and is also being done in this subject of study as well. Now, sure. That's clear. So... I'm running again. I'm running into that major issue of you're kind of assuming you're going to be proven right eventually, and that's supposed to mean something. And I fail to see how that is meaningful because you haven't shown why you're correct. You simply state that it's possible that you might be correct, and those are well, two hugely different sentences, right? The by that definition, we should believe the Earth is flat because. Maybe it is. Or we should believe that the Earth is held up by uh, whatever the heck that dude is from Greek mythology because maybe he's right and science could prove that. Like, there's so many maybe it's trues, we don't know it's not yet. Actually, I was pointing out the historical accuracy of science and its development and not insulting it by calling it some kind of flat Earth cult. Okay. Well, I, I, 
I, I have to disagree with what you just said because you haven't shown a reason scientifically. Someone's like drinking every time we say science, by the way, so I'm enjoying this part. Um, <laughs> you, <laughs> you have, you, you seem to be, and again, correct me why I'm wrong here. This is the way I'm taking it. You know me, I'm trying to be straight with you. Um, you seem to be saying science isn't 100%, therefore there's room for Bigfoot to exist. And my response to that is, I shouldn't believe Bigfoot exists until I have a reason for him to exist. And both those statements can't be correct in my book. You can't have Bigfoot Actually, existing yeah. without reason for Bigfoot to exist. Actually, uh, not exactly the way you stated it, but Bigfoot can exist without science knowing. Okay. Bigfoot, show me, yes. show, show Bigfoot me can Bigfoot. exist without science knowing, show me but at some point, science needs to know show it. Me, show me the 100% uh, square area of this entire earth that was dug up and fo for fossil records. Okay. If you want to go to the fossil records, fossil records are incomplete. They're still being put in. That is the pro process of science. Science is a process of learning. It's not a some golden pillar of, of know-all. And I agree what, with you, Patrick. That's what, that's what I was trying to, to, to I, outline. I, I agree. That's what I was trying to outline when I was talking about the history of science and someone put things into the science book and was progressing and I, still is and still is today and especially so, in this subject. So I 100% agree with you that science is never going to get there 100%, right? But there still needs to be a threshold that is acceptable for belief and a threshold that is not acceptable for belief. Well, Flat I don't really Earth believe that. does you not said, have that threshold. You said right? you said science will never be there, and I don't I don't believe that. I no, no, I said science will never be one hundred percent everything. Is what I was is what I was trying to say. Like science yeah, is never okay. going to dig up every square inch of the planet to look for the fossil record, right? I can agree with that. But there is a threshold of um, credibility that needs to be attained for something to be accepted. Okay. Um, again, there's a reason why we believe that. Uh, a giant ape used to exist in North America some, you know, 100,000 years ago. I can go look up the name if you want. Like, uh, there's the reason to believe giant apes used to exist because we have fossil evidence for it. Gigantopithecus but, was, was shown not to be a giant ape. I don't know if that's the one I was it referencing, but there's... Um, I, I'll, I'll, I'll try to talk and read at the same time to find the uh, thing I'm referencing here. But, okay, giant sloths in South America, fine. We'll go with that one. We have fossil evidence to believe giant sloths exist in South America or woolly mammoths exist in Russia, right? We have a threshold that has been met to not question that. That being said, we do not have, we have not met that threshold for Bigfoot. So, you believe it, that's cool, I have no problem with you believing it. But, if we're going to talk to the public and convince the public of our opinion, because that's kind of why we're doing this debate, right? To present our arguments to the public. If we're going to try to convince the public of our position, there's a certain threshold that needs to be met. And to me, Bigfoot and Flat Earth are on that like same threshold, where there's lots of people that say they think it's true, and I'm sure they sincerely hold those beliefs, but there's no backing to it. Well, why don't we go ahead and put this to bed? Uh, flat Earth was debunked thousands of years ago in Greece when they noticed the uh, the spherical shadow of the Earth on the moon. Okay, I'm not calling put, you a flat Earth that, at all. That put, I'm not that trying put, to say that. Uh, that put Flat Earth to bed then. The only thing that existed after that is a cult. Okay. No, I, I'm, I'm sorry if you're taking it that way, Patrick. I'm not in any way trying to conflate you with Flat Earthers. I promise. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I'm sorry if you if I took if you took it that way. I did not mean that. And so we're going to go for about 10 more minutes, guys, and then we're going to be moving into the Q&A section. So keep on sending your Burning Desire questions for either of our fantastic interlocutors. But once again, guys, the floor is yours. How about we go five minutes and then take a break because I'm sure we're going to need <laughs> some, some, some relief as well. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Whatever. Um, hey, you need to crack open a beer. That's the that's the real problem here. Um, to be honest, I don't have time to drink. I am so busy all the time. But uh, um, I'm, I'm more lucky know, than you. I, I have maybe one a month, 
that's all that all the time I have. But uh, but I completely agree. We have not reached the threshold for scientific discovery. We haven't. Okay. Um, and, and part of the idea behind these debates is to put out there what we do have, what we do think, what we do believe, and what do we need from science. Okay. Scientists, step in here and tell me what we need. Tell you know, tell us what threshold. Exactly, and I don't mean, yeah, I need to find something that is, you know, a finger or something. I mean, actually outlines this and, 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 and get involved. You know, we are real, there are some serious, and I'm not some wackadoodle bigfooter. I am a critically discerning, uh, primitive living skills, thermoplastics engineer person who is uh, investigating this. Yes. Um, again, I, I make no effort to try to demean you as an individual or your uh, credentials or your personal belief in this, right? I can only go, um, I just threw the link here, the giant, giant oh my gosh, I can't say that Gigantopithecus. word right now. Thank you. Uh, it's in China, not North America. That appears to be where the bones are. So, the gigantic apes did exist in the past. Um pretty well before humans it looks like well, but uh not in north america so that's been that's been recently debunked it actually wasn't much bigger than a billy ape and uh, they well, know all this they know all this from like six teeth that porcupine pulled into a cave so yeah i'm 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 a Wiki wikipedia has its own uh statements on that yeah. but that's kind of besides the point i think um since we're wrapping up here is there any other topics you wanted to go back and forth on before we moved on or any other anything you think I should um, know or what's your favorite beer uh, I I'm sorry to say it I know it makes me hipster I'm an IPA man okay cool I like Shinerbach Shinerbach is good I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hate on Shinerbach if you would have said Bud Light I would have been mad at you so thank you for not ugh, saying that ugh. or Shinerbach or uh, Yingling Lager I, I like that. Can, I drank a can of that and I got lost in my kitchen for two hours. <laughs> mm -hmm. See, um, can I guess consensus. Yeah, um, Amy, I think we might be kind of good on the back and forth if you, if Patrick's okay with that. Yeah, um, in fact, what I will say then, uh, if it sounds like you guys are done wrapping up, is to go in the same order that we started in just having some closing statements so that we can move into the Q&A section. And with that, thank you both for having uh, some good, honest dialogue. And Patrick, the floor once again is yours for your closing statement. Uh, in closing, I'd like to say that... Uh, I do have uh, demonstrative representations of the phenomenon that surrounds Bigfoot that is reported by people who have experienced uh, what is uh, described as Bigfoot. And I believe that uh, supports the existence of, uh, of that being. Orge? Cool. Um, thanks, Patrick, for doing this. Uh, thanks, Pat, for inviting me. It was an uh, interesting conversation. And, uh kind of felt like a panel discussion where I didn't have to fight with five people at once. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, good talk. To me, there is no evidence for the Bigfoot phenomenon that is not exclusively tied to someone's personal uh, interaction. All the evidence for Bigfoot seems to be I saw this, therefore believe me, or I guess the other thing would be cave drawings and totem poles, but I couldn't figure out exactly which ones Patrick was referencing. So, to me, there's no reason to believe Bigfoot exists, and we have, a, also, I didn't even bring up, we have a history of hoaxes of it. Uh, the, the footprints from the 50s that started the Bigfoot phenomenon was a confirmed hoax. So, um, could have brought that up in the conversation. Sorry, Patrick, didn't mean to drop that last minute. That's bad form on my end. Yeah, I but, deny. I deny that it was a hoax. Sure. So I mean, I guess that was. A, I, I apologize. I should have I mean, brought it up. You have to show proof that it is a hoax. So. Yeah, but um, I, I saw a link in the uh, side chat, the public chat, as to where I got 
the opinion that's a hoax, but that'll be my closing statement. Thanks, Amy, for uh, moderating. Woohoo! Is it break time? Thank you guys very much. And with that, we are switching into the first question for oh, Ogre. And so, see, you might get a, get a chance if you need to. <laughs> Why are footprints, audio, forest language, and hundreds of sightings not evidence? Not all evidence has to be unique to a Bigfoot. In a court of law, such evidence has put people in jail. Uh, CFB, my response to that would be starting from the back and working forward. What time has someone been thrown in jail for uh, footprints and forest language? I'm not familiar of those court cases. And then um, moving forward in the sentence... I there is reason to believe that every one of those examples is not created by some unknown eight foot tall ape man that has never been hit by a car in the existence of cars. There are plenty of examples of paper of uh, not paper of uh, hair follicles being tested that were supposed Bigfoot that ended up not being uh, forced language. I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. Uh, I'm assuming like hoots and hollers and noises that you don't think sound like a coyote, but actually are. That'd be my assumption. Um, I think, was it mountain lions have a very, mountain lion screams sound a lot like a female woman, female human. So all that stuff, of course, is all hearsay. I've yet to see one documented case that is confirmed to be an eight species that is not pre-existing. Mm -hmm. Thank you so very much. And a question from Mary Wilson. Has I, is there an established scientific standard that must be met to prove existence? So I guess that's probably directed at, Patrick would probably want to answer that too, but he's taking that's has slash is. Has, yeah. is there an established I, scientific Patrick, standard? Patrick, do you want to take this first or do you want me to do it? Hold on. <clears throat> As there is, there been an established scientific standard that must be met to prove existence. Um, there absolutely is a burden of proof that is put on this subject. Um, and really, it's, it takes observation, up close and personal observation, a uh, collection of DNA of, from, from the areas that the being was watched from, um, that would do, but other than that, it will take a body with flesh and bone to be able to observe, the, you know, on a DNA cellular, uh, you know, scientific level. I would agree with what uh, Patrick said. I think a, uh, a level of physical evidence on a molecular level, or a ge sorry, genetic level, I meant to say, a genetic level is important <clears throat> to distinguish a new species. Uh, beyond that, you can't really tell. That's how uh, new species of ants, for example, are discovered because all ants kind of look the same, but until you hit that genetic level and can tell the differences in the genomes, that's where you hit that. That's where you can distinguish mm -hmm. for existence. Mm -hmm. um, I will also add, I didn't say this at the beginning, my background's in geology, so I'm doing my best here to talk about things with flesh and blood. That's not my thing I like. I like rocks. I they don't talk they, back. They're much better. So you're doing fine, Orgy. I, I appreciate you being here. This wouldn't happen if you hadn't have stepped up the plate. So let's go. Thanks. I'm having fun. Cool. That's right. I'm sending love to both of our interlocutors. But I will say that if you have a burning desire question for either of them or both, now is your time to tag us by giving a caps lock question into chat so that we can help see it but a question from quick witty patrick where are the bigfoot bodies i'm not sure but if you find one call me all right i'll come <laughs> I, I guess i would add to that real quick i know it's a patrick question but to me that's a big thing a me eight too. to ten foot tall creature has never been hit by a car or shot by a hunter well i think that's cause for concern 
Technically, there have been reports of that. It's just inconclusive evidence still. It hasn't, it hasn't come to surface in a way that is conclusive. So, yeah. you know, I don't report, I don't, I don't regurgitate things that I don't find fact-based. Yeah. Um, I, I think I would add to that. There was a uh, famous wolf, I believe, in California that was hit by a car. And uh, it's like the only wolf in the past 200 years that's ventured south enough to its location. And somehow that got hit by a car, but Bigfoot's never been hit by a car. And again, look at that map. The entire lower 48, with the exception of, as Patrick said, the desert regions and the uh, low grasslands of the breadbasket is all covered in Bigfoot sightings, but no one's ever hit one of the car. And again, that's just a logical fallacy. Question from Joe Parker BS. How many human bodies bones have anybody found in chat? Anybody we are killed or die in the woods every day? I don't, I don't know if that's a question, but yeah, there's lots of humans that die in the woods. Um, okay. I don't, I don't know if that's supposed to be a question or not. Me neither. It was more of a statement or, or, or argument. And Amy, you're doing a fine job. Thank you for being here. Thank you guys so very much. In fact, you guys are being awesome and fantastic airlockers, which it's is true, really yeah. all you need. <laughs> you're like, that's <gasps> And yet I, oh, from Pine Island Research, and yet I can't find an account of a car hitting a grizzly bear. Are they not real, too? Um, I never bothered looking up that before. In a quick Google search um, of grizzly bear car accident, I'm finding examples. So, here I'll throw one in the uh, side chair right here. Grizzly bear cubs orphaned when Mama Grizzly struck by car in British Columbia. So, there's a example right, th right there from a Google, quick Google search. I didn't actually read it, so I could be making crap up, but... <laughs> I guess I'll also add to Patrick's point, no car accidents is not my burden of proof. So that I, I agree that that is kind of asking for absence of evidence is evidence of absence sort of thing. But, yeah. Patrick, if you found a dead body, what would you do? Patrick, from, from B. Lynn... <laughs> Patrick, if you found a BF dead body, what would you do Bigfoot. with it? A Bigfoot dead body, what would you do with it? Who would you reveal it to? And I can't... And then a whole bunch of emojis. <laughs> to be honest, I would uh, take a chainsaw to it. I'd part it up and I'd drop it off in every parking lot of every news station that I could drive to. I, want I believe to he would do, do that. I want nothing to do with a Bigfoot dead body. It is radioactive to me. I'll throw in on that. I had a conversation on this channel about my disbelief that people wouldn't shoot a Bigfoot if they got the opportunity of it. And um, I mean, Patrick, you were probably, I think you were in the camp where you wouldn't shoot Bigfoot, right? You said you wouldn't. That thought doesn't cross your mind. What The thought that crosses your mind is where your feet are and where your truck is and how fast you can get there. That's, that's what crosses your mind. If you're very, very stoic, you can observe what it's doing while you're leaving the area. I suppose, but to me, as a less forested person than you... If I had my gun and I saw Bigfoot, I 
would think I can shoot this and be the most famous. Um, I, I would be famous for finding proof of Bigfoot. And Search. obviously they're all over the United States, so I'm not destroying the population by killing one. Search but, and rescue would have me track you down and find you in the fetal position. <laughs> Maybe. I've never seen a Bigfoot, so I don't know. That's a joke. Uh, yes, yes. I'm and all right, guys, a few more minutes. So if you want to get those burning desire questions in for either or both of our interlocutors who have been wonderful and generous tonight, send them in now. Uh, Pine Island Research wants you to throw it in my driveway. So feel free to chop it up and throw it in my driveway if you get the opportunity, Patrick. I have considered... Thrown into my driveway? <laughs> no, I've I've considered uh, a, the dead body thing. Um, seriously, um, I really am towards darting one, but having played cat and mouse for eighteen years in the day and in the dark, using my skill sets against theirs, and theirs is much greater than mine. Um, it would take a special team to dart one. Okay, it's just they are amazing. And they're so amazingly elusive that they have uh, gained mythical status, if you can imagine that. And because we're sitting here arguing about it. And I will say, if there's anyone out there who would love to do an after show, always welcome to sponsor more conversations out there. Just tell us about it. But as well, what is... Patrick's a best piece of evidence. Um, I had one. I tracked one up to my camera. It stuck its eye in my camera, and my camera went off. I call it inconclusive. It is inconclusive because it is not the face of a Sasquatch at six inches or two feet. It's just that eye looking through some pieces of bark that I had set up, covering and camouflaging my camera. It is inconclusive, but that is the best. Uh, the eyeball shot is the best evidence that I have. I don't call it really evidence. It's trace evidence as far as, source, as, far as science goes. I have no comment on that. Well, the votes are in. After show wins. <laughs> Woo -hoo! Is the after show here still? Like, can I can I go piss between show and after show, or I really need to pee? I've had enough beer. We got so. it. We we got it. Go ahead. Okay, sweet. Oh, I can wait till uh, Q and A is done and final. We did final answer, statements already, right? I'll answer yours. I'll answer. Well, okay, yeah. Pat, Patrick's got me. I can go pee real quick. Patrick, answer all questions directed to me, please. And I will say, as we are transitioning out of Q&A is there anywhere that we can find both of our two fine interlocutors um, Patrick Vaughn is on Facebook V-A-U-G-N and my tracking albums everything I've put out there is public and you can look at everything I have and everything every picture there has something to do with an encounter or an experience Mm -hmm. Thank you so very much, Patrick. And I think Ogre might have said he had to go away for a second. Yeah, he'll be right back. Uh, so uh, how are you doing, Amy? That's okay. Where, where I'm at doing awesome. I hail from... Oh, <laughs> where... So Squatch Talk wants to know where can Ogre be found? Dun, dun, dun. But yes, when he comes back, we will get that. We are going to be switching into an after party in a second in an after show. But I do want to thank both Patrick and Ogre for joining us on tonight's Dub night, boom, 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 but really more 
casual conversation, getting to know each other's positions better, which is always fantastic here on Squatch Talk. And that's right, you can also find me here on YouTube at youtube.com slash Amy Newman, where we love having all sorts of different conversations. And letting people speak. That is always the important thing. Letting people speak. And it, it looks like he's come back, which means I am sending the ball right back over to you. Uh, Ogre, where can people find you? Yep, I'll uh, post my YouTube channel in the public chat. I got a Twitter and all that jazz like every other douchebag on the internet. Um, I, I post very infrequently because I have a life. And YouTube isn't my life. But, um, yeah, I do mostly geology and physics, debunking of creationism and mud fossils and stuff like that. This is way out of my wheelhouse. I'm sure you could tell by my lack of quality answers to the questions. But, yeah, feel free to sub to me. I'm sure, you know, I'd love to be a millionaire off of YouTube, but that's not going to happen because I'm terrible at it. So. Woohoo! Thank you, both, both Ogre and Patrick, for joining us on tonight's debate night with Squatch Talk. I am Amy Newman. I want to thank all of you for joining us. And with that, I am going to hand yes, it you, off Amy. to Patrick because we are going into after show debate mode. Send in love. <laughs> thank you.